In this video, we are going to tell you everything you need to look out for when buying land in Ghana and also how to deal with land guards coming up next. I'll start with the basic things, right? The location. What I'm to say is a bit controversial. You know, like every time it rains, like Kaswa, it's sort of flooding and what have you, right? Because it's a lowland. So sometimes you need to understand the dynamics of the area you are buying. And if it sounds too good to be true, then there's a catch somewhere that some people have realized and stayed back. And there's this funny advice that always buy land in the rainy season. Or at least go and watch the land when it's raining because you know the issues with the land. There are two types of search. You have the quick search or the window search. So when you get it in a day. And then you have the official search, which can take up to a month sometimes. If you are not in a hurry, you should do both. So if you do the window search and nothing comes up, like everything is clean and clear, fine, that's a good sign. But if you are not so sure, you should just do the original one. Even after doing just the quick search, you should then, like I said, ask around. Sometimes people don't like it, but when you go to an area, ask the people that you are looking for the land guards. No, but what if where you are going to is just like bushes? Who are you going to? Yeah, especially like the Dodoa stretch. Exactly, like right now, mm -hmm. where you can get affordable land mm -hmm. is at the outskirts of town. Yes. So after Nsawam, Dodoa, yeah. after Kaswa, mm -hmm. and all those places, right? I'll tell you a funny story. So I know someone who was born in Nsawam, raised in Nsawam, and he decided to buy land and build in Nsawam. And he built it up to the floor, the, the first floor, and someone came and said, look, this land is my land. And you have no right to go. The guy actually waited for him to get that far. Like some of those lands, like it's very, very difficult, right? And the fact that it's an estate selling it to you doesn't mean that the land is genuine. That's what people should always note. Even if it's a registered company selling the land to you, you don't know their history. Some of them, they are just fronting and they've not even paid for the land, you know? And sometimes when they even take the money up front, they pocket it. They don't go and pay the actual owners. And all these things to like litigate. So here's what I always say. When you're buying the land and you do your search and everything is confirmed, the next thing, like I said, like you go around and ask people. But if there's nobody around, here's a trick we normally use. The land that they claim that it's for you or they want to sell it to you, you can go and pour, like people, people don't like to do this, but it's about smelling the scent of the land. You go and put some, maybe some, uh, one sand. trip of sand or stone or let's say some blocks if there's a problem there someone up here exactly you know just like the way sugar attracts ants like they would really really appear and then you would know all the history and the do's and don'ts so it's one of the tricks and then sometimes too whoever is selling the land to you like i always say if the person is putting too much pressure on you please take a step back so never be forced like don't be under yes. pressure under duress mm. to make payments quickly yeah yeah because those are all red flags mm. and always bear in mind that whatever money you are exchanging for a piece of land when that money goes forget what any lawyer will tell you in this country your money isn't coming back. And even if it's going to come back, no, and you know, if someone is owing you, right, and you take the person to court, the person can tell the court how they can pay. You, you, you get what I'm saying? You can't actually force them. I mean, people may say, I'm ignorant, the laws of Ghana work. Yes, nobody has said the laws of Ghana don't work. But you, as a busy individual, you, you all the time you spend chasing this issue up, it's also a loss of money for you. Have you sat down to quantify it? Sometimes, intentionally delay the process just to see how it's going to, like, uh, evolve and things like that. Yes, they, they'll tell you that, oh, the price of land change every day. It's true. No doubt about it. Today you go, the price is like 10000 Tomorrow, it's 12000 But again, it is better that way than to lose your entire 10000 There's also another type of document. So for any area, there's the master plan where it shows the demarcation of the roads and all of that. If possible, you should also try to see that document. So how would somebody get the master plan? You have to go to Lands Commission, Town and Country Planning, they, but they don't really have a Lands Commission they should. For instance, if you're buying in, in Sawam, those places are in the Eastern region, so you go to Kofiridia, right? If you're buying in Accra, you have to go to the Accra Lands Commission and all of you. So, in, in places like Eastern region, right, they don't have like land title. It's just registration. Yeah, Accra, you have registration and land title. So, in Accra, you have some lands around some places I don't want to mention that. The land is registered in a different person's name, but the land title is also in another person's name. 
how is that possible? You and I, as we sit here, I don't know how, but <laughs> everything is possible here. You understand? And please, an indenture is just a piece of paper. A friend of mine says something. Only start buying land when you know you are ready to at least put up foundation. Acquire land, you don't buy it and watch it. Once you do all your checks, everything is right. You buy, start building, at least do your foundation. It, it gives you a certain level of security. I mean, after running all your checks and all that, because sometimes you may be in the right, but because they feel you are weak, you are not ready to build. They'll let someone bypass you, come and build. Worst case scenario, it's okay. The person will try and refund some of your money to you. They'll give you another land some somewhere. You know they play that trick all the time. So yeah. You mentioned that if you acquire the land, you should at least build a foundation. At least. But some people feel that okay, let me put up a wall instead. What What are your thoughts okay. on that? I've seen some like that before. I'll give my own experience. When I bought my two plots of land, I said, oh, let me do a wall on it. Right. Someone actually came and broke the gate of the wall and was trying to build in the plot. We got them arrested, right? But that issue, like, the, it's gone away. However, immediately after that, I was advised that, look, put something on land. What you use to build a wall, unless your goal is to sell the land, maybe you are buying it as an investment to resell, what you would use for the wall, please use it for the, the building instead. Like, no, no matter what it can do, even if it is a single room or whatever it is, as a boy's quarters, just, I mean, do your foundation, do something. Right now, a gate, a proper gate is like 7,000, 8,000. And to do a wall over a plot of land right now would not cost you less than 50,000. Won't cost less than that. Yeah. That 50,000 plus the wall. Yeah, you can do your foundation. Yeah. You spoke about land guards, right? What has been your experience of land guards? How have you dealt with them? There's one thing I've realized with land guards. You don't have to be weak, but you should know when to back off. Okay. Explain. If they meet you, you also need to like manner. What if you're a woman? I think that the woman should rather play it the smart way. Let me talk about the men then I'll come to the woman. As a man, right? You need to show them that like you're not really like afraid of them or something, but like you're really to talk and you want an amicable solution the half plot i owned that i sold to my friend what we did was that we changed um 10 10 cd notes like a lot these guys were just coming every day whether they if we give them big money up front they'll still come the next day so instead we changed it into 10 10 cd notes so we had the budget for settling land guards wow like you must add a budget for yes. settling land guards as part of your building exactly project. that's just ridiculous why can't you get police you to come and arrest them are you ready to pay the police to come <laughs> That's also like settling the land guards. <laughs> but the police are supposed to do their work no. now. You see, this like is I, Ghana. I said I'm a realist. The police, they are busy. I'm a realist. If, if everybody with an issue comes to call the police, when you get to the police station, there'll be no police. So you have to be a realist. Always choose the path of least resistance. If this guy giving me problems, I can give him 20 CDs a day whilst I'm building and he will not disturb. 20 CDs a day. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying an assumption, right? And he will not disturb my peace. I'd rather have that. Because even if I go and take the police officer, he cannot come all the time. So it's better I deal with my situation as it is. And yeah, you need to have that budget. Some places, they are lacking you don't have land guards, um, uh, land guard issues. It's fine. They make you pay some security fee, something. I said the land guard, you know, there's digging fee. Sometimes, yeah, they take the digging fee. And then even after that, you know, it'll come and pass with their motion. Like, oh, chairman, nothing for the boys today. Just give them some 50 Ghana, you know, 100 Ghana. Charlie, look, it's not worth the stress. It's not worth the stress. So you are ready, especially with land. At least have money for your foundation. So at least, do not, not even to flow the foundation, but just to raise the blocks and, and uh -huh, so that they know that you are working wherever it comes so when you settle the guys at that very um beginning stage but become your friends the land guy that threatened to beat me up is right now is actually one of my close friends you have to turn your enemy into your friend like or um, supposed enemy they're not really your enemies most of the time these land guys if you understand their history you wouldn't even blame them here's how the history of land guys evolved people needed guys to protect their lands for them the families. So they hide these young guys with the idea that when they sell the lands, they will compensate them. But over time, and this is something you know, a lot of us renege on our promises. So these land guys have felt that uh, you are cheating them. They can't go to their families and go and, what do you call it, 
like rub shoulders with them or cause mayhem there because the families have also told them that they've gotten police protection and things like that so who can they come in and bring their problems to it's you the innocent bystander because they feel it is easier for them to get something from you and when you sit down with them and you know where they are coming from most of them are actually very reasonable i mean sometimes they do things that you question a bit but you realize that most of them feel cheated and so this is like a survival for them it's not like i'm condoning it because i've also been a victim of that right but i always say that when i was beginning to build i was like why don't the langas like come and support you to even build and you know also make extra money and things like that but they have a different mindset you have to understand where they are coming from so i made a special video where i spoke about how i lost my land in ghana so click on this video and watch it so you don't make the same mistakes i made see you on that video thanks be brave